Hello and welcome to the last video in the module where we are talking about innovation so that we enhance our knowledge during this course that focuses on business strategy. In this video we are going to talk about innovators and followers. Now, how does it come that there are some companies that never really come with a disruptive innovation yet are somehow still considered very modern and kind of innovative even though they do not come up with their own innovations? Well, this is what, because they are followers. You don't have to be innovator to be successful. You can be the follower if you do it correctly. So let's discuss the justification of why some companies are innovators and why some companies are followers, what advantages and disadvantages both of these approaches bring. Let's go for it. I think the most important point that we need to understand is called the first mover advantage. Here is the definition. A first mover advantage exists where an organization is better off than its competitors as a result of being first to the market with a new product, process or service. So if you are a first mover, if you are the innovator, then you will have certain advantages. For instance, there definitely is going to be this small group of early adopters who will purchase your product because they just want to be first and they want to try it out. So this is definitely part of first mover advantage. Then there are additional benefits for first movers. Let's talk about them. Experience curve benefits. If you remember some videos back, I think it was in third module, we talked about experience curve. So that the more of the product we produce, the lower the unit cost we might achieve. So if we start producing the product as the first ones, we are going to be ahead on this experience curve of our competitors. So we will have this as an advantage for ourselves. Secondly, scale benefits. So if we are the first mover, we deploy the product to the early adopters, then we already will have some volume that we produce, some customer group, and we can scale our production faster than the followers, because then our followers will simply need to find their first group of customers, and just then they can scale their manufacturing up, save on the production side the costs. Thirdly, reputation. If we are a first mover, then there definitely is going to be a group of customers who will remember us as the innovative company. They will give us the credit for innovating this field. We will earn the reputation. This is, I think, a very simple point to understand. On the other hand, it's not always the best to be the innovator. There are many products throughout the history where the innovator failed due to some reason. Maybe they were too much ahead of their time. There was maybe a Newton, a personal digital assistant made by Apple, which was a very failed innovation, but there has been many other reasons to it. So there are many companies who uh, voluntarily are followers. They are not innovators and they have good reasons behind it. Now let's talk about the reasons why you might want to become a follower. Well, you have free riding, so the late movers can imitate technological and other innovation at less expense than the original innovator. So if there was a company that had some closed innovation, they were working hard on it for three years and now they reveal it to the world and you are a follower, you see it, what do you do? Hmm. You will get the innovation and you already know what you are going after. You already know what you should produce. Maybe you purchase their product, you disassemble it to the smallest pieces and you know very well what you have to produce. So thanks to that, you will have it much cheaper to produce this innovative product than what the innovator had to pay for it. Well, of course, they are going to earn the reputation of the innovator, but you will have it much cheaper than them. Secondly, learning. So the late movers can observe what worked well and what did not work well for the innovator. So the innovator made some innovation happen and now you can observe, hmm, this innovation is great in general, but there can be some things which might be better about it. I can improve this feature and I can improve that feature as well because that was not working so well. So you see, you observe the innovation and you can improve it further. You don't have to do the same mistakes as the innovator did. 
Now, for the second part of this video, I would like to talk about the concept of disruptive innovation. What is that? Well, essentially, what does innovation change? Innovation changes what we call expectations of customers. So once an innovation, especially disruptive innovation happens, then the expectations of customers are going to be very different when it comes to any producer of the product that they are considering to purchase. Let's go for the definition and some nice drawing for you. A disruptive innovation creates substantial growth by offering a new performance trajectory that even if initially inferior to the performance of existing technologies, has the potential to become markedly different. If you look at the graph below, you will see this definition in practice. At first, for the graph itself. On the horizontal axis, we have time, and on the vertical axis is performance, a set of dashed lines going through the plot from bottom left to upper right, our performance expectations of customers. Of course, we have higher and more demanding customers and lower, less demanding customers. Let's now look at the arrow that represents old technology. This technology shows some sustaining innovation. So for instance, cars are constantly being improved little by little. However, what will come now is a disruptive innovation that will radically shift entire technology arrow to the right. This one is now new technology. It again has some steady pace of sustaining innovation, but as you can see, it is generally higher in performance compared to old technology. This can be, for instance, Tesla with its electric cars within a car industry. So you see, for every product, there are going to be two kinds of innovation. There will be the sustaining innovation. We simply, all of the companies that are within an industry or within the market are going to make the product better little by little. Then all of a sudden, there will be a company which will be a truthful innovator that will perform some disruptive innovation, which will rapidly change the expectations of customers. And I think that is all for this module where we discussed innovation.